and the testing supplies are running out. So what do you think, what do you do if you have COVID? The answer is from local doctors right now, first at four. From Indiana's number one news source, this is Fox 59 First at Four. A sad update tonight. Two children are dead after a house fire early this morning. Yeah, we can tell you it happened in Clinton County just outside Frankfurt. Good, good afternoon. I'm Max Lewis. And I'm Fanchin Stinger. Happy Friday to you. This is a very difficult story to start first at four. Fox 59's Eric Graves has an update for us on where the investigation stands right now and more reaction from a community that, as you can imagine, is absolutely devastated. The fire happened around 2.30 this morning just off of County Road 700 North in Clinton County. It's just a little bit south of Rossville. Now this is the remains of the charred house behind me over here where firefighters found two children dead inside this morning. We had uh, heavy fire showing from the rear of the home. Um, took about 20, 25 minutes to get the fire under control and knock down. Rossville Fire Chief Aaron Fife says once crews were able to get inside the house, they found the bodies of two children. Both children were deceased. 12-year-old Shea Hyde and her 5-year-old sister Amelia. Their parents, Brandon and Talia, got out of the home safely along with the youngest child. Fife says the family and even a Clinton County deputy tried to go inside the house to save the kids. They did make an attempt to, uh, to get back in to get them. Um, but were unsuccessful. Counselors and clergy were at Rossville Consolidated Schools today where Shea was a sixth grader. Anytime you have a loss, it's, it's one too many. James Hanna is the superintendent and started working on the district's crisis plan when he heard the sad news. We're more focused today on the social emotional side of it than we are on, on math. We also learned that three district staff members are also firefighters. They were all at the house fire this morning. It's impactful because some of those people on the scene actually see that student every day or every other day. Hannah expects the entire community to come together for the Hyde family. I already see that happening where we have an outpouring in this community to try to help. Reporting in Clinton County, Eric Graves, Fox 59 News. Eric, thank you. We are sending love and prayers to that entire community, especially friends and family of those lost. The state fire marshal's office is investigating right now. At this time, we can tell you no foul play is suspected. Very sad story. Though. New information first at four. A controversial state senate bill that would have given parents more control over their school's curriculum is no longer being considered. Senate Bill 167 would have required school districts to post curricular materials online for parents to review. It also targeted school libraries and aimed to prevent educators from teaching materials seen as biased against any race, gender, or sexuality. Lawmakers heard passionate arguments on both sides of the issue last week. Senate President Pro Tem Roderick Bray says senators tried to make that bill work, but says he doesn't see a path forward. Two versions of a similar bill are still moving through the House right now. You can read more on both of those over at fox59.com. 403 is the time right now. We are in kind of a transition period with our weather. Yes. Because it's starting to not just feel a little bit more like winter, but it's really getting real. Yes. <laughs> but we aren't going to see any uh, actual winter signs of winter. No, what we I've heard. really aren't. Oh. Hey, Max, nice to have you with us today. Well, thank you, Brian. Isn't that great. He's uh, hanging out with us for Friday happy hour. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> is it? Oh, we that's started what we're early. doing. We started, <laughs> we started at 4 o'clock, the happy hour here, right? I wish. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what, though. There are many meteorologists and news departments around the Midwest and across the nation that are bracing for a major winter storm. Not here. It is going to bypass central Indiana and what has been a stunning lack of snowfall so far this winter. And despite uh, uh, the, the cooler temperatures today and the cloudy skies, we're not getting the snow to fall. Actually, it's starting to look a little sad, isn't it? The grass is kind of brown. The trees are just... It, uh, maybe a fresh coating of snow would look nice. That is something we have not had this entire winter. So this is a strange stretch of weather in central Indiana. The lack of snowfall is for the records. None since December the 1st. It looks like it wants to snow. There might be a flurry or two in the area this evening, but this storm system is going to pass harmlessly to our south. We're trending cooler though. The temperatures are down about 10 degrees from 24 hours ago. More seasonal feel to in the middle 30s after a couple of days in the 40s. And the chill will be more noticeable as we enter the weekend. The winds are tightening up out of the north and east. The wind chill at 
but 28 will likely dive down into the single digits by early tomorrow morning in many locations. Now there is a slight chance that we'll see some snow, but not until late tonight. Temperatures will hold steady near the freezing mark for rest of the evening. Roads will be in great shape, and as this cooler pattern emerges, the winter storm for the time being is staying south, and the snow hole that we coined earlier in the week is going to hold for a little while longer. I'll time out your weekend and a chance for some colder air in my seven-day forecast. All right, Brian, thank you. Well, this just into the Fox 59 newsroom. The Indiana Department of Health is reporting nearly 16,000 new cases of COVID-19 today. The state also reports another 97 people have died from the virus or related things associated with the virus in our state. They are also reporting 3,500 Hoosiers are in the hospital with COVID-19. More central Indiana schools are taking remote learning time. McAuliffe Junior High and Marion High School dismissed at noon today. Marion Community Schools reports a few dozen students are actually isolating after having a close contact with someone who tested positive with COVID-19. Monday is already off for MLK Day and all middle and high school students in Marion will have a virtual day on Tuesday. The district hopes to return next Wednesday. Meanwhile, Vincennes University announced what they are calling a brief pivot to virtual learning. Again, the university is taking Monday off for MLK Day and students will have virtual classes for the rest of the week. University officials say the Omicron case surge is causing this ripple effect. It's not just the number of cases we're seeing directly. It's the people who are in the community who have families, who have spouses, who have others that, that are impacted. Now, the university plans to resume in-person learning on the 24th. There will be additional safety protocols in place. You can find that safety plan on this story online right now at fox59.com. Meanwhile, we have been following the shortage of rapid tests across central Indiana. The state hasn't gotten a new shipment in almost three weeks. Yeah, quite some time. And now health care workers are limiting who, in fact, can even get a rapid test. Fox 59's Courtney Crown lays out some of your options if you, too, are waiting for an answer. We started the day with 180 appointments and only 80 test kits. Mm -hmm. So like I said, shout out to Howard County for helping us out of that jam. At this moment, the demand vastly outweighs the supply for rapid tests in county health departments. For right now, the state health department has directed them to only use rapid tests for those under 18 or 50 and older with symptoms. It makes us a little nervous. However, with their, their imposed guides on how to use them, it's helped us conserve them a little better. The State Department of Health hasn't received any rapid tests since December 27th, and local health departments say they have not heard when the next shipment will come. Well, we're out of our rapid tests. We are done. Healthcare leaders are urging people to have patience and look around for appointments online, either at health departments or pharmacies. If you are shopping around for a testing appointment and you get one somewhere else, please call and cancel. But the second you cancel that appointment, it becomes available for someone else. Health departments say they still have PCR tests widely available to everyone. Just remember, those take longer to get results. It might be four to five days as opposed to 48 hours. Wayne County and others across the state allow walk-ins for testing regardless of residency and encourage everyone to use good judgment. If you are experiencing symptoms, even if you do not think that it is, COVID-19. Stay home. Courtney Crown, Fox 59 News. Courtney, thank you. Meanwhile, a federal website where you can request free at-home COVID tests will start accepting orders. That goes into effect next Wednesday. The website covidtest.gov is up right now. Starting January 19th, you can order tests at no cost to you. Those tests should arrive about a week after your order. A company being investigated for possibly providing fake COVID-19 tests is shutting down for a week. You may have heard of a company called the Center for COVID Control. Well, they have a testing center in downtown Indy, as well as one in Muncie and a planned location in Crawfordsville. Signs on the Pennsylvania Street location say they are closed until next Sunday. And a message on the company website says demand is too high and staffing is too low. But our news partners in Chicago have been tracking dozens of consumer complaints filed with the Better Business Bureau. The company is based in Chicago and customers have reported waiting too long for those test results or not getting them at all. I haven't gotten my test results. He said 48 hours, so it's been longer than that. The majority of complaints allege that there's no response after the taking the test. There's a payment required for expedited services response times, and they don't get the expedited response. 
The Center for COVID Control currently has an F rating from the Better Business Bureau. Several states have launched official investigations into the company. Now, in a statement to Fox 59, the company says those delayed test results have been caused by high demand. The company's founder says they are training more employees. We're going to keep following the story and bring you updates as it develops. In the meantime, you can find a state-approved testing site online. Just go ahead and visit coronavirus.in.gov. Well, meanwhile, the federal government has approved two pills to treat severe cases of COVID-19, but they are in very short supply. That is the word this evening. The pills made by Pfizer and Merck were approved earlier this month. Both companies report they did not have enough supply to ship out initially, and the pills take a few months to manufacture. Pfizer says its supply is expected to improve dramatically by spring, which is after most scientists expect this current surge to drop off. Once there is supply, the pills will be available by prescription. All right, a death investigation on the south side leads to a disturbing discovery by IMPD. An urgent message for everyone to keep an eye out straight ahead. And the man accused of a terrifying attack in Wisconsin. This man, he's facing even more charges today. We have an update on what was just added and his first day in court. Here's what's coming up next at 430. The Omicron surge is impacting children's care. How cases in kids is throwing off the routine checkups. That's coming up at 4.30. Super Wild Card Weekend, Sunday on Fox. It's almost game time. Jalen Hurts leads the Eagles. A great day for wild card football. As they look to dethrone the champs in a showdown against the GOAT, Tom Brady, and the Bucks. Going for it all. Touchdown. Bucks. Sunday at 1 Eastern on Fox. All part of Super Wild Card Weekend. If you or a loved one have been injured in any kind of accident, Ken Nunn can be your lawyer today and you don't have to travel. The whole process can be handled over the phone and you never have to leave your house. Ken Nunn makes getting legal help quick, easy, and convenient. You can have a lawyer from the comfort of your home with one quick call to 1-800-CALL-KEN. Call me, it's just that easy. Over $951 million collected for our clients. Call 1-800-CALL-KEN. Watch Indy now, Thursday morning, for RG Decor's latest design trend. We strive to be there for our clients. They need us at some of their most trying times, and it means a lot to us to be able to be there for them uh, when they need us the most. That's really what we are after, is keeping the clients as happy as possible. We're able to offer them the best solutions in their home to be able to give them that true comfort experience. We are a very upstanding, dedicated company that's always going to do the right thing. My name is Austin James. As a musician living with diabetes, finger sticks can be a real challenge. That's why I use the Freestyle Libre 2 system. With a painless one second scan, I know my glucose numbers without finger sticks. Now I'm managing my diabetes better and I've lowered my A1C from 8.2 to 6.7. Take the mystery out of managing your diabetes and lower your A1C. Now you know. Try it for free at freestylelibre.us. Window Nation is here to beat the winter cold with their triple zero sale. Zero down. Zero payments. And zero interest until 2024. Plus, get two free windows with every two you buy. No limit. This offer is only valid through the end of the month, so call today. 866-95-NATION or online at windownation.com. When we're really dissecting an incoming storm, we turn to the brain. I use this to compare notes with our latest weather technology. You can't get accuracy like this anywhere else. All right, let's check the weather right now. It is 413. There is a lot to look forward to this weekend. It looks as though the uh, traffic here is moving so, uh, very, very smoothly. This is 465 South at I-65. So um, okay. we've been telling you the Indy Snow Force, they are on standby for when the snow does <laughs> Sorry, eventually That arrive. was an internal monologue. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they're just waiting and Yeah, patiently. they haven't had a lot yeah. of work this year. I mean, last weekend it did get a little icy here in the city, and of course they're going to be proactive and be out on the lookout. Now, there may be a little bit of light snow that falls in the area late, late tonight, but that's, that's the deal. It hasn't snowed here but a half inch all season, and the last time we had any snow that was measured was back in the middle of November. It's been a historic run of 
lackluster snowfall in central Indiana to the likes of which we've never experienced before. We have never in the 137 years of weather records uh, experienced no measured snowfall from December 1st through today, January. What is today? The 14th? The 13th? It's the 14th. Oh, oh, you know what that means. What? We're at the midway point of meteorological winter. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I just threw in my own drama music there. What's going to happen for the second half of winter? Winter's got to show up sooner or later, right? It is a great Friday evening for folks here in Carmel. 35 degrees and on the ice rink. Look at the little ones hanging on. Boy, I tell you what, what a great activity that is on a day that really the yeah, temperatures are ideal. There's not much wind, so we had some fog to start the day. We may have seen a few flurries here and there. The skies are trying to brighten up. No precipitation. Cloudy and 38 in Indianapolis downtown. At the airport, it's 35. So you've noted the temperatures have taken a dip. The last two days, we've been in the 40s. But we're going to get back to a little bit of sunshine this weekend, while many locations around the Midwest are bracing for a pretty substantial winter storm. In fact, tomorrow, if we see any snowflakes, it would be very early on. And then as the day progresses, we're actually going to strip back the cloud cover as the storm system sags to the south and perhaps even brighten up the skies. We've got a northeast wind that has developed, so cooler temperatures prevail right now. We're about 10 degrees cooler from where we were 24 hours ago. Temperature is at 35, 35 at Kokomo, Indiana. East wind is at 10, and the wind chill at this hour isn't all that bad. But the winds are going to tighten up as the storm system gets stronger. Now the storm is going to be farther to our south, but the air will be generated, drawn in from the east and northeast, and the web of pressure lines as the storm strengthens will start to increase the wind. So we'll get a little bit more of a breeze going here later tonight and early tomorrow morning. But look at this. You've got almost two dozen states under some form of winter weather advisory, which includes a winter storm watches, winter storm warning. Uh, watches have been hoisted now in Kentucky, and this entire area it just surrounds the state of Indiana and that snow is breaking out in a big way across parts of Iowa where the snowfall rates tonight are increasing to about one to two inches per hour. So there's a lot of upper level energy dynamics in the storm system and the main low is actually going to be the secondary one further to the south. So this is going to continue to spread some snow into Illinois then eventually some of this will leak into Indiana late late tonight but as the secondary low takes over as the main event all of this moisture gets drawn south and then everything's going to turn and go up the eastern seaboard. You can see here the winter storm severity this product was issued and started last year but it kind of highlights where the winter weather will be at its worst tonight through much of Iowa, parts of Missouri, and western Illinois. And then in this is a three-day run. You can see how it's accentuated again to our south and east. So literally, this thing is going right around the state of Indiana. Six-inch snowfalls are a possibility and a very good likelihood in parts of Iowa. And look at this, eastern Kentucky, parts of Ohio, and then eventually to Pennsylvania, all in the running for the biggest of the snows with the storm system. We might see some minor accumulations. There may be a period of some light snow and flurries after midnight ending perhaps around five, six, seven o'clock in the morning with a better chance of seeing a lighter coating south of Indianapolis, which is pretty substantial. Again, we haven't had measured snow here so far, what we call meteorological winter, and that's since December the 1st. May, may see a flurry or two. You're going to feel the winds tighten up tonight, but after midnight, some of the snow in Illinois might start to start to squeak into parts of Indiana. That's a 6.55 in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. That snow has already moved out, and our skies are beginning to brighten up for what will be a fairly decent weekend. That low pressure that dives south, it's riding a jet stream that's still cutting in from the north and west, so it's going to be a trend towards cooler temperatures here over the next several days. Temperatures are going to hover around the 30 degree mark on Saturday. And look at these numbers. We've got a brief pause in the cool weather on Tuesday. So here we go, 30 on Saturday, 34 Sunday, colder on Monday. There may be some snow showers around on Monday, then a brief warm up to 40 degrees on Tuesday, only to fall sharply Wednesday. Looks like some real Arctic air will settle in later next week with highs only in the 20s and several nights with low temperatures down into the single digits. All right, Brian, thank you. A death investigation on Indy's south side leads officers finding a young pair of girls in what are just can be described as disgusting conditions. Fox 59's Jesse Wells has more on this investigation, and we do want to warn you the details in the story may be disturbing for some. Aside from some tires and trash piled in the backyard, this home on Alice Avenue appears normal from the outside, 
But inside, IMPD officers say they found a woman lying dead in a doorway and two young girls, 9 and 11 years old, living in filth. According to this affidavit, upon entering the home to investigate the death, IMPD officers were overwhelmed by a repulsive stench of trash and rotten food piled several feet high. The court documents continue that one of the girls was found on a urine-soaked mattress surrounded by a sea of used diapers and waste. That girl was removed from the home and taken to Riley Hospital. The Department of Child Services took away her sister police arrested their father, Charles Lowe, for neglect of a dependent. Raising families up is all of our responsibilities. While neighbors on the street say they didn't notice any signs of neglect until after police arrived, Sandy Runkle with Prevent Child Abuse Indiana urges everyone, including friends and family, to watch for warning signs of neglect and report those issues to police. Every adult in Indiana is a mandated reporter and the law states anyone who has reason to believe that a child is a victim of child abuse or neglect must make a report. For their part, police say the cause of death remains under investigation. After being arrested, the suspect claimed his wife hit her head in the bedroom days earlier and hadn't been feeling well before her death. Jesse Wells, Fox 59 News. It's a terrible story there. And the suspect remains behind bars on a $60,000 bond at the Marion County Jail. He's going to be due in court for an initial hearing next week. Well, the man accused of driving an SUV into a Christmas parade in Wisconsin, he is facing several new charges this afternoon after his first day in court. Daryl Brooks, there he is. He had already been charged with six counts of murder for killing six people during that attack. Well, during a court hearing today, prosecutors added 71 additional charges against Brooks for that November attack. They charged him with recklessly endangering safety. Each of the 61 people who were hurt in the crash were affected by those charges. Brooks also faces charges of misdemeanor battery and felony bail jumping. Well, some of Indiana lawmakers want to see more cameras in construction zones. Ahead, first and four, why others say the safety may come with the price of freedom. Plus, he is one of the greatest tennis players in the world, but he may not be playing for a trophy next week. The latest on his legal battle playing out right now in Australia. The world is watching this one. We've got more straight ahead. Think premium can't be capable? Think again. Introducing the first ever AT4 lineup. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. Step up to GMC with 0% financing on these GMC models. We are professional grade GMC. Meet Chip. 30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip. And at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about CHIP. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Life is full of things to worry about. Your home shouldn't be one of them. Problems with your foundation, basement, or crawl space can severely affect the safety and value of your home. At Indiana Foundation Services, we offer permanent solutions that help put your worries to rest. Call us today for a free inspection. Inspired by your strength and a balanced approach to women's health, Inspired by creation and all the joy you bring into this world. Inspired by mothers, daughters, best friends, and everything you'll soon achieve. We're inspired to deliver the best care for every stage of a woman's life. At Franciscan Women's Health, we're inspired by you. Why is a question only you can answer? You know what makes you get up early. You know what makes you stay up late. You know why you want to make a better life. 
but sometimes you don't always know how. Indiana Wesleyan University believes your why is as unique as you are. You know why. IWU is how. Well, some businesses along a busy stretch in Plainfield had to close down today because of a gas leak. Plainfield Fire responded to this gas leak around 9.30 this morning near the intersection of Perry and Main Streets. Center Point and firefighters had to shut off power in that area and close off businesses. Also developing today, IMPD is looking for someone who robbed this bank. Officers responded to the BMO Harris Bank. This is on Intech Drive. It happened around 10.30 this morning. Police say thankfully no one was hurt, but those robbers did get away with some money. If you have any information that could hutch, help catch the culprits, the bandits who pulled this off, please call IMPD. Indiana lawmakers are once again considering a proposal to add speed cameras in work zones. A bill that's going through the state house right now would use the technology to ticket drivers speeding in active construction zones. Advocates say it's about protecting workers in those zones, but some lawmakers who are opposed have concerns about privacy. We continue to put more and more workers at risk, and, and not only the workers, but we put the, the motorists at risk, and it's because we can't get people to slow down in work zones. Enough is enough on the infringements of the individual, their right. Now, you know, people are going to counter that the workers have a right to, to be safe, and I get that, but we are taking appropriate safety measures, and I think there are other things that could be done. Now, INDOT says more than 3,300 crashes happened in Indiana work zones just last year alone. A similar bill has been introduced in the Senate. Lawmakers say both bills are expected to be heard in committee next week. New data shows people pulled back on shopping during the end of the holiday shopping season. Retail sales declined almost 2% from November into December. Automakers are still having a hard time getting enough cars to customers. We've been hearing about those chip shortages, those chip shortages coming from overseas, of course. Other parts are shortages are, um, in limited supply as well. Economists were expecting a decline because holiday shopping started so early and also because retailers were dealing with supply chain issues and staffing shortages. The number includes sales at retail stores, online vendors, and also restaurants. While you're looking at one of the world's best tennis players, once again facing deportation as he prepares to play the Australian Open. The, governor revo uh, the government revoked his visa for a second time this morning over the player's vaccination status. Originally, the organization for the tennis organization there had given him an exemption. The Minister of Australia defended his government's treatment of the tennis player, saying, quote, Australians have made many sacrifices during this pandemic, and he wants to, quote, protect those sacrifices. The Open begins in just three days. Jorovic is hoping to play. One pediatric office in Fisher says they are overwhelmed by the number of kids sick with COVID-19. It's part of a troubling trend during this latest surge ahead. Why that leading doctors, why that's leading doctors rather to reschedule routine visits. The call went out and we are so happy to report many of you stepped up with an amazing answer. The response our food banks are telling us that they are seeing and how you can still pitch in. What's so great about being a Kroger Boost member? Free delivery on the Kroger products you love and more rewards like double fuel points. Boost by Kroger Plus, a new level of membership starting as low as $59 a year. Learn more at Kroger.com. It can get pretty nasty out there. So before you venture out, make sure you have the ultimate winter protection from WeatherTech with our laser measured cargo liners and floor liners which protect carpets from snow and ice. Bump Step protects the bumper and no drill mud flaps guard the exterior. While Cup Phone keeps your phone secure, order your American made products from the comfort of your home at WeatherTech.com. I am an indispensable healthcare partner. My job is not about me. My job is about the family that I take care of. I absolutely feel that. We have everything from GYN to breast care to OB care. Hendrix has it all. We have to work as a team with clear direction coming together as one unified force to help our patients. It's important to have a good team because I can't do it alone. This is Hendrix. Find care at hendrix.org women. 
Window Nation is announcing our virtual home show extravaganza with pricing that only happens once a year for a limited time. Hurry as our home show pricing is only available for a few weeks. Get two free windows for every two you buy, plus pay nothing for two full years. With over one million windows installed and over 125,000 satisfied customers, no one is more qualified to install your new windows than Window Nation. So call today or go online to schedule your free in-home or virtual estimate. When you need health care, Johnson Memorial Health is the right place to start. We offer high quality, patient-focused care from world-class providers. We know we can't do everything, but our quality scores prove we're great at what we do. And if you need a higher level of care, we'll connect you with the area's top medical specialists. Because we're nonprofit and independent, we're able to keep your costs lower. Health care built by and for the people of Johnson County. At Johnson Memorial Health, great care starts here. Kroger, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales for prices that are lower than low on food that's fresher than fresh. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Well, the Live Guardian radar is looking pretty clear right now, although there's a small chance we see some of those snowflakes this weekend. But it is nothing compared to the snow that we saw four years ago. On January 14th, 2018, Central Indiana got between two and four inches of snow. That's close to the record snowfall for this day. That was set back in 1968 when we got 4.3 inches of snow. Again, tonight is not looking like a major snow event at all. We are not going to see any of that. But it is something to keep in mind. Chief Meteorologist Brian Wilkes has a look at our forecast. No snow at all, Brian. No, really. I think wow. we, might, we might start the day with some light snow and flurries, but to see accumulation, it's going to be minor at best. That's pretty remarkable. You look back now, and it's almost a, it's, it's as if we have to send out archaeologists to remember what in the world winter was like. What is a shovel? What's a snowblower? We don't need these things anymore. Three of the last four Januaries have failed to produce more than an inch of snowfall. So it's been a pretty strange go of it, and it still is at this midway point here of January. It's also the midway point of meteorological winter. Winter, and let's be honest, it's been pretty much a cakewalk. We've had temperatures above average 77% of the days. We've had little to no snow. In fact, none since December the 1st. We haven't measured any. And at 35 degrees, it's about as perfect of an evening as you could find to be here on the ice rink in Carmel. That's the view in Greenfield. Yeah, no snow on the ground here, but a hazy overcast and a 34 degree temperature with a north wind. Maybe a flurry or two squeaks out here this evening, but for the vast majority of central Indiana, we're not going to see much snow this weekend. While our neighbors to the west and to the south and to the east are all bracing for a blockbuster snowstorm, there are winter storm watches and warnings out for nearly two dozen states, not central Indiana. We've got dry north winds blowing in, cooler temperatures at 35 degrees, and a wind chill that will be more noticeable by daybreak as we continue to drive in some colder air and a small chance of a few snow showers here, a little bit of light snow to start the weekend. Tracking the temperatures will be around the freezing mark for the rest of the evening enjoy your evening no real precipitation to fall and really ahead just a cooler pattern emerging the winter storm is staying south and we stay in the snow hole for the time being i'll let you know when we'll have a better chance of seeing some snow in my forecast all right brian thank you a fox 59 update right now the new marion county jail is officially in operation the jail is located within the community justice campus that opened last week in the twin air neighborhood the marion county sheriff's office says they had 2,000 inmates in the old jail this new jail can hold up to 3,000. Intake opened for new arrests at 6 o'clock this morning. Deputies are still transferring inmates between jails right now. The details of those transfers is being kept secret, of course, for security reasons. Well, in another sign of just how strained health care systems are, primary care doctors are now delaying routine checkups to deal with this latest surge we're experiencing. They're trying to focus on the patients who need the care the most. I talked with a few doctors today about why this is needed. What we want to be able to do is try and decompress our emergency rooms and our med checks, leave those for the sickest of the sick. This week, Community Health is asking its primary care offices to free up more same-day appointments so they can take care of the record number of people who are falling ill. If your child doesn't need an immunization or things like that, we may ask you to wait uh, uh, till next month. This pediatric office in Fishers is rescheduling appointments six to eight weeks later. We're going to get everybody taken care of. It's just 
and the priority. While this isn't just affecting pediatric offices, the system says it's seeing an alarming rise in the amount of children contracting COVID-19, and numbers statewide are backing that up. Cases among kids have gone up considerably uh, with the Omicron variant kind of at play. The Regan Streif Institute says this past December and so far this month, 407 children, 17 and under, have been hospitalized with COVID-19. Of those hospitalized children, only 16 were vaccinated. Vaccines are doing an excellent job at keeping kids out of the hospital in the same way that they're keeping adults out of the hospital. Dr. Kunzer at Community says this is just more fallout from the lack of space in hospitals and lack of staff. He said they need the community's help with masking, vaccinations, and social distancing to make it through this surge. You go out, you see the football games, you see outside, it appears life as usual. I can tell you our hospitals are being overrun, and this is through all the health systems. Now, community told me today that they have 400 staff in quarantine today, which is really just stressing the overall system even more. Both doctors we talked to asked that people get their vaccines and continue to wear a mask. Well, we have a good news update on a story we actually brought you yesterday. Gleaners Food Bank says you, many of you watching, you have really stepped up to help fill their needs right now. The food bank told Fox 59 it was in danger of not having enough volunteers to pack meals today. Well, we can now tell you since that story aired, enough people have signed up that Gleaners had two work lines up and running packing food today. Look at all these folks. They heard their pre, they answered the call, and our neighbors next week are going to be able to be fed thanks to them. And another group coming in this afternoon. That is a happy sight indeed. Several volunteers tell us they were directly inspired by the stories they saw on the news. Gleaners has another big packing day scheduled for January 28th. They say that is filling up fast as well. So if you'd like to volunteer, we do have details on how you can do that at Fox 59. Com. That's great news. It is great news. Indianapolis Public Schools honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. today ahead of Monday's holiday. Yeah, this is the 41st year the district has held a ceremony and unfortunately they had to do it online this year. Choirs from three different IPS schools sang songs promoting unity and empowerment and district leaders encouraged students to keep fighting for what they believe is right. DePaul University President Lori White gave the keynote speech there. She says Dr. King's leadership during the civil rights movement laid a groundwork that allowed her to reach the point she is at today. My challenge to all of you today is to consider how we can best honor and commemorate his legacy. His legacy cannot and must not end with a famous speech, but it must instead live on in our actions and in the way we live our lives, support one another, and push for a stronger and more just society. Now, IPS is going to be off on Monday in observance of the holiday. Well, schools across the country say they're struggling to keep classes open right now. Yeah, we've been telling you about this. We're going to take a look now at the latest data, and we're going to show you how some communities are stepping in to help fill these gaps. Plus, healthcare leaders are making one last push to get you covered. The message from doctors as enrollment time runs out. Here's what's coming up next at 5 nothing like what it was a year ago. Our long-term care facilities once again telling us there's an increase in COVID-19 cases. Why officials say they are more prepared now and how you can help protect the vulnerable in your life. Angela Answers is sponsored by Scandinavian Designs. Shop modern style for every budget at our new furniture showroom now open near the Castleton Square Mall. Tyler, whose truck is this? 1225. You know whose van it is. Hey Santa. Hello boys. How's your furnace holding up? Excellent after my peak performance tune-up. What do you have for the good boys and girls this year? A brand new Bryant furnace for under $59 a month. Ho ho! Blended. Whatever it takes for you, Santa. Well, I better be off. See you both next year. Ho, ho, ho. Simplicity feels good. Chase, make more of what's yours. Isn't it great how swinging through Culver's drive through marks the unofficial start to family time? How biting into a hot off the grill butter burger makes worries melt away. And how a fresh frozen custard concrete mixer puts a smile on your face every time. Here, a meal you didn't have to make is a meal made fresh for you. 
And being greeted with a smile, even beneath a mask, makes all the difference. There is a reason we put so much care into our food. That reason is you. Welcome to Delicious. It's your ultimate snowball fighter. It's your frostbite fixer. It's your all-wheel drive enabler, roadless travel, challenge accepted, winter warrior. The all-wheel drive capable Hyundai Palisade, Tucson, and Santa Fe. It's your journey. Own it. Get 1.9% APR for 60 months on the Kona. Now with complimentary maintenance. Visit your local Hyundai dealer today. When Williams Comfort Air helps you experience true comfort in your home, pizza tastes better. Jokes are funnier. Sleeping is simpler. Birthdays are brighter. And me time is magical. Experience true comfort today with $100 off any HVAC repair. Get details at WilliamsComfortAir.com. Catch meteorologist Jim O'Brien on Fox 59. While well, students in Chicago public schools staged a walkout today in protest of what they are calling unsafe learning conditions that follow similar actions in New York and some other major cities. Hmm. Even without those protests, public schools say absences are at an all-time high right now. New York schools say only about 75% of students are attending class. In L.A., Boston, and Chicago, it's as low as 70%. As we told you at 4.30, that comes as a record number of children are testing positive for the virus, and many children end up in the hospital with COVID-19. Even more students are missing class because of close contact. In some places, parents are stepping in and doing everything from answering phones to cleaning, and to some are even serving lunch. Without this, I can't look into a camera and say that we're going to be open tomorrow. And with this, I can. That the majority of parents and guardians across the country feel the very same way. Remote instruction en masse will be, it should be, in our rearview mirror. Since 2020, the federal government has sent $190 billion to school districts to keep schools open. There is no federal database to show how that money is being used or has been used to prevent closures, however. The deadline for health care open enrollment is tomorrow. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid said nearly 14 million people have already signed up for coverage this year. Local groups are encouraging Hoosiers to take advantage of those options that are available. I don't know that we fully understand in Indiana why uh, Michigan's rate of, of the uninsured is, is half of Indiana. Uh, we have the Healthy Indiana Plan. We have some other options. I think it really uh, is just going to take a community effort to make people aware of these options. But we know it's a good thing for everyone to have more people with coverage. It, it protects them, uh, but it also reduces the cost for everybody in the healthcare system when we have more people covered. So if you do need to get covered, you can simply go to healthcare.gov. You can find a link to do that online at fox59.com. Just look for it on our links page. Well, Hoosier who served our country through three separate wars is earning one of the highest honors in our state. Sergeant Major Robert Brown was just awarded the Sagamore of the Wabash Award this week. Governor Eric Holcomb presenting that award yesterday in honor of the Sergeant Major's patriotism and his service to our country. And we do thank him. Sergeant Major Brown is a native of Rushville, Indiana. New developments in a snack heist from southern Indiana. We'll show you where this potato chip truck was found a little bit far from home. And making memories while studying the brain's basic functions might help treat trauma. Real news never stops. Trust Fox 59 News at 10 to deliver. Major news that's happening now and breaking news that can't wait. Investigations that dig deeper when you need to know more. And a weather forecast that goes way beyond what you can get on your phone. Complete coverage of the facts. Every single night at 10 o'clock. That's why we are Central Indiana's number one news source. Fox 59 News at 10. Shop huge savings this weekend at Ashley Home Store's 72-hour sale. Save 30% off your first item plus 20% off the rest of your purchase. Or get 0% interest for four years with no minimum purchase. Three days only at Ashley Home Store. Can a button work wonders in the bedroom? No, no, not the fun button. The other button. Sorry. 
<laughs> Marcia has sleep apnea, and her struggles with CPAP had me sleeping in the guest room. Now she's got Inspire. It's a sleep apnea treatment that works inside her body with the click of a remote. No mask, no hose, just sleep. Now I'm back. And we're back. Come on, let's get it on. Inspire. Sleep apnea innovation. Learn more at inspiresleep.com. Safe auto? Some things aren't worth putting off, like your car insurance. Good thing we're here to remind you. After an accident, you have an important opportunity to go after all the money you may be entitled to. So put a powerful law firm on your side, one that will fight for the maximum compensation you deserve. If you've been injured in an accident, tell them you mean business. Call 1-800-2-KELLER. Keller and Keller, right now. 1-800-2-KELLER. Floor Model Spa Sale at Family Leisure. Huge savings. Free upgrades with every spa purchase. Free LED lights and waterfall on most models. Floor Model Spa Sale going on now at Family Leisure. Fanchion Stinger, weekdays at 5, 6, and 7, only on Fox 59. Don't miss Ashley Home Store's 72-hour sale. Save 30% off your first item, plus 20% off the rest of your purchase. Or get 0% interest for four years with no minimum purchase and no down payment. Saturday through Monday only at Ashley Home Store. All right, let's turn to the weather now. It is looking like a freezing cold night with a chance for snow on the roads. Chief Meteorologist, our very own Brian Wilkes, has a closer look at our chances. Brian. Yeah, Max, and I'll tell you what, if we're going to get any snow, it's going to come well mm. after midnight, and it will be on the light good, side. Good. You know, we're, we're in the strange, uh, what we call the snow hole here in central Indiana. It is really remarkable not to have had any kind of measured snowfall here all season long. To put it into perspective, areas like Lubbock, Texas, and Birmingham, Alabama have had more snow than we've had in central Indiana. So where is it? Well, we've been out of service when it comes to the snow. Uh, the snow shovels, the snow removal, not needed. Uh, despite having a little bit of ice put down late, uh, what, Saturday evening a week ago, that was probably the most uh, uh, difficult winter weather we've had this, this so far this season. So taking a look at this area, you know, we're looking at uh, what we would typically have had about 11 inches of snow to date. So we've only had a half inch of snow. That fell back in November. That's key to my statistics here because we went through the entire month of December without any snowfall for the first time since 1940. See, the snow season runs from October all the way through till May. Many of you may remember when it snowed at the track when it was open and there was practice there back in 1989. Well, that snow season, the actual winter, what we consider meteorological winter, is December, January, and February. So for the time being, we are tied for the least snowiest on record with 1941. But the snow hole that we've been talking about all week long is this area of central Indiana, which is on an island by itself across the entire Midwest where no measured snow has fallen in Newcastle or Rushville, in Indianapolis to Greencastle. That, in 137 years of weather records, has never occurred. And it looks like the snow hole will hold despite maybe a little bit of light snow and a few flurries sneaking in here after midnight and perhaps around daybreak Saturday. This is our latest machine forecast of some snowfall and there could be a couple of tents or some minor accumulation delivered, most of which would likely fall in the southern or southwest central portions of Indiana, perhaps in Bloomington, maybe Nashville, down towards Lake Monroe, Bedford and Brownstown. You get a very light coating, but I'll tell you what, doesn't look like the prospects are going to be very high for snow here in central Indiana for a little while longer. We certainly have the cloud cover. There's the ice rink in Carmel, a heavier haze overhead, and a 38-degree temperature downtown. 35 right now with an east wind and a radar that's quiet. It'll remain that way for the rest of the evening. But the snow chances will perk up to maybe about 30% of the area, especially over south-central Indiana tomorrow, very early in the morning. But look what happens as the day progresses. We may actually begin to see the skies brighten up. Northeast winds are delivering some drier air and cooler air. It's 35, and a wind chill that's being calculated at 28. Not bad, but we are importing the colder air, and therefore the temperatures are going to be noticeably chillier tomorrow morning, especially with a wind chill around 10 above Saturday. Look at all of the states, if you're traveling this weekend, look at all the states blanketed with some form of winter weather advisory. Winter storm warnings to our west. Winter storm watches now have been hoisted to our south and to our east. There's the storm that's taking the southern route. Heavy snows are falling now near Des Moines, Iowa. Rates of one to two inches are, are, are possible. This is the area of low pressure, the Clipper, that will transfer.
transfer the power to the southern area of low pressure that will eventually swoop down to the south, scoop up some moisture, and then head right up the eastern seaboard. So areas you see in orange here are the winter storm severity index. And you can see how it's just bypassing the state, kind of pirouette right around the state of Indiana. Half inch, or excuse me, half foot snowfall totals are possible to our west and to our southeast and to our east. So Fox Future Cast shows that a little bit of light snow, a couple of flurries may sneak into the area here. Timing on that would probably be more like 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning through about 7 a.m. There is our uh, updated uh, tracker here, and it shows that mainly cloudy skies to start the day, some flurries and light snow in the area, but look how the clouds begin to break, and we may even see a little bit of sunshine. However, the overall pattern here at the midway point of January and what we consider meteorological winter seems to be changing. There is more of a definitive northwesterly flow developing, and later next week we're going to get into some colder air. We'll get a shot of it on Monday, dropping temperatures to about 4 degrees below the average, but another strong Longer push of Arctic air could be in the works late next week. Doesn't come with much snowfall potential, but with the cold will come the snow eventually, and I think we'll start to see some better chances of that as we get into the second half of meteorological winter. Later tonight and early tomorrow morning, some light snow and flurries could be falling right around daybreak, 23 the low. Then that flurry and light snow activity diminishes. The skies brighten up. The temperature reaches a high of only 30 degrees. The northeast wind will be brisk. Might see a little bit of light snow far south southeast on Sunday as the storm departs. Shot of snow showers on Monday and then much colder air hits Wednesday. Behind a cold front, temperatures falling Wednesday and Arctic air hits with lows in the single digits by next Thursday and Friday morning. Well, an update now on a crime spree, this one involving a potato chip truck. That's a little strange. The yeah. Gripos <laughs> truck has been found on the other side of the state. Hmm. We told you earlier this week that someone stole this big yellow truck in Evansville on Monday. The Davies County Sheriff's Office says someone used that truck in a series of thefts. And after those crimes in southern Indiana, the company that owns the truck says it was found this morning up in Gary. That's a long way. The transport company says it's currently being held in a salvage yard. They're working to get it back. No word if anyone was arrested for the truck theft or for that crime spree. Well, a groundbreaking study into how brains make memories, and it could now lead to new treatments for post-traumatic stress disorder. Researchers at the University of Southern California studied brains of zebrafish to show how brains create memories. Well, the study finds making memories appears to create new connections between neurons. Scientists also discovered negative memories appear to be formed in a different part of your brain than in most other memories. They believe this research could allow scientists to devise new treatments for PTSD or even Alzheimer's disease. Well, to live in the Antarctic town of this particular place, it's going to cost <laughs> you something beyond an arm and a leg. Yeah, no thank you already. <laughs> no, Antarctica. Well, next at four, which organ you may need to lose oh. before you head south. Plus, detailing the universe, why scientists are creating a 3D map with over 35 million galaxies on it. Here's what's coming up next at 5. Well, still ahead in our next hour, the Clinton County community is in mourning tonight after two children died in a house fire early this morning. Coming up live at 5, the important message fire officials now have that will hopefully help save a life in the future. And our most vulnerable, once again, seeing more COVID-19 cases tonight. Health officials explain how you can protect those living and working in our long-term care facilities. And the Biden administration now weighing what comes next after the Supreme Court struck down the vaccine mandate, how it will affect the pandemic response, all that and more next Live at Five. Closed captioning is sponsored by Terry Lee Hyundai on Highway 37 in Noblesville. If you or a loved one have been injured in any kind of accident, you can have a lawyer from the comfort of your home with one quick call to 1-800-CALL-KEN. Call me, it's just that easy. Call 1-800-CALL-KEN. Why is a question only you can answer? You know what makes you get up early. You know what makes you stay up late. You know why you want to make a better life. But sometimes you don't always know how. Indiana Wesleyan University believes your why is as unique as you are. You know why. IWU is how. 
With our new RV, finding our next adventure is easy. Hiking, mountain biking, climbing. Find your adventure at the Indy RV Expo. Indiana's largest RV show and sale is back. The 2022 Indy RV Expo, January 8 to 16. Discount tickets at IndyRVExpo.com. Indy RV Expo, sponsored by Tom Wood Subaru and Tom Wood Power Sports. January 8 to 16, Indiana State Fairgrounds. Find your RV adventure. Wouldn't it feel great to get some junk out of your life? Call the team at Fire Dogs Junk Removal. We haul it all and get you clutter-free fast. Fire Dogs is a local veteran and firefighter-owned company ready to serve you. Just point and we'll do the rest. Call Fire Dogs Junk Removal today. It's a fact. Two out of three Americans who qualify for Medicare do not receive all the benefits they deserve. Now, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield introduces a free Medicare plan checkup to make sure you receive all the benefits you qualify for in 2022. Call 1-800-745-2441 today and receive extra benefits for a $0 monthly premium. Benefits like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drugs. And to help you stay healthy at home, you can have free prescription drug delivery, online doctor visits 24-7, and free exercise classes. You can even receive money towards over-the-counter health items. Call 1-800-745-2441 today and feel confident you have all the benefits you deserve for 2022. You can receive extra benefits for a $0 monthly premium, like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drugs. Call 1-800-745-2441 for your free Medicare plan checkup. Join Beer Show Edme on Fox 59 News Point at 11. All right, listen up. If you ever wanted to visit the national parks, mark your calendar. The service just released the five free visit days for 2022 this year. The first free day is this Monday. Not bad. There are also days in April, August, September, and November. Some of the parks included our Zion National Park, Yellowstone, Everglades, Yosemite, Glacier, and the Grand Canyon, and there are more. Park rangers note these five days get pretty busy in the popular destination, so make sure you do plan ahead. Maybe pick a less lesser known area to explore on those oh, free days. That'd be fun. There yeah. You go. Well, for the first time, we are getting a look at the most detailed 3D map of the universe that has ever been created. Yeah, and it's never been done to, up to this point, but scientists say it already includes over 7.5 million oh. galaxies. That's quite a bit. They use 5,000 telescopes and other fiber optic technology to split light from each galaxy into separate colors. It tells scientists a lot about a galaxy, including its chemical makeup, its distance, its speed. Now, when the 3D map is complete, it is going to include over 35 million galaxies and hopefully help answer a lot of questions about the impact and role of dark energy. Well, the town of Villa Las Estrellas in Antarctica is one of only two places on the southern continent where people are allowed to live year-round. Look at this. Mm -hmm. There's only one catch, though. You <laughs> cannot bring your appendix. Oh. No. <laughs> that Interesting. Is that is because the nearest <laughs> hospital is more than 600 miles away. So a case of appendicitis, no. that would be deadly. Makes sense. Thank so you. the town is requiring all citizens, even the children, must have their appendix removed before they get there. Ladies are encouraged to not get pregnant during their time in that tiny village either. Okay, by the way. well, that, I guess that makes sense there. <laughs> well, some of the biggest accounts on the app TikTok are raking in the money. Forbes reports the top seven influencers made a combined, combined 55 million dollars in 2021. The biggest TikTok star, Charlie D'Amelio, made 17 million dollars on her own. That's quite a bit. That's more than the CEOs of companies like McDonald's, Starbucks, or even Exxon Mobil. Forbes data shows influencers quadrupled their earnings last year compared to 2020. That's largely due to revenue streams from other outlets like advertising, clothing, lines, and TV shows. Well, that's going to wrap it up here for us first at four. Thanks for hanging out with us yeah, this evening. Happy Friday to you. The Fox 59 News Live at 5 starts now. Here's what's coming up next at 5.